While Metasploit is an extremely powerful exploitation tool, you don't want it to become a crutch that prevents you from further advancing your skills. It's important to work directly with the exploits so that you can start to develop a better understanding of how they work. The best way to do this in Kali Linux is by working in the exploit database. So to access it, change directory to user slash share slash exploit db. Once there, you can use ls to list the contents of the directory. And then here within the platform subdirectory, you'll find a whole bunch of different scripts and also several other subdirectories that are unique to different platforms. And within those, a bunch more scripts that are specific to those platforms. So rather than trying to search through all of these different scripts and trying to find the one that you need that way, you can actually search through the files.csv file that has information about each of the different exploits within these subdirectories. So to do this, we can use the grep function. So let's say that I'm familiar with the particular service running on a foreign system that I want to exploit. I could use grep, then in this case, free sshd, and then the file that I want to perform the grep on, so files.csv. And here we get a list of each of the different exploits with that keyword in it. I can then further narrow my search by piping it over, and then using the grep function on the output of that result. And here we grep out just the remote exploits and eliminate the denial of service exploits that were listed there. So now we're down to only two exploits. And the second one in particular is the version that I need an exploit for. So I want to then browse to that directory. So change directory, then platforms, windows, and remote. And then I'm going to copy that script to a different location with a name that I can actually better acknowledge what it is. So I'll change it to my root directory and then give it the name free SSHD exploit. And then we'll change to our root directory. And there's our Perl script right there. So then we'll use the VIM editor to view the script. And if we look through this, it's actually not that complicated what it does. Looks like it takes input from the user who executes the script on the host port, the user and password, and the target, which will either be XP Service Pack 2 or Windows Vista. And then after the buffer overflow, it's going to execute this shell code, which if we browse to the bottom, based on the message it returns to the user, appears to be a shell code that creates a TCP bind shell on the remote system on port 4444. Now a lot of these scripts are going to have to be tweaked because of certain things hard-coded in the script. In this case, that doesn't seem to be the case. So it seems like we should be able to launch the script just as is. So we'll execute the script once without any arguments to see the usage once again. And notice that it does prompt for a username and password. So this is a post-authentication script. So we're just going to assume that we brute force access to the FTP service. We'll further discuss how to perform brute forcing network services in a later video. So then we'll launch the script with the arguments. So first with the host IP address and then the port that the service is running on. And then the user is user, password is password. And then target is 1 for XP service pack 2. And once the script is done running, it tells you that you are now finished and that you can check your shell on port 4444. 
So then we'll go ahead and load up Netcat to connect to our remote shell that we've now created on that system. So we'll use nc-vn for verbose and then connect via IP address, specify the IP address of the remote machine, and then port 4444. And there you have it. We now have a shell on our remote system. So that is how to run an exploit directly from exploit code that you have pulled from the exploit database. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand.